Hello, congrats on the win tonight. Um, Coach, my question is going to be for you. Um, how proud, uh, we know Benaja's offensive performance speaks for itself, but how proud are you of, of her on the defensive end tonight? First covering Clark in the first half, and the second half, you moved her over the Mitchell. So how proud are you of her defensive performance, and what led to the move to Mitchell for the second? Yeah, look, I'm obviously extremely proud. Proud of her, her every day because she comes in and plays really tough. She's our, obviously has to guard the, the best player on the other team um, every single game. Um, you know, she's just as tough as nails. So really proud on that. And we found good, really good rhythm with her on the offensive one. That was, you know, she's a great isolation player. I think we put her back to basket a fair bit and and uh, B just made pl big play after big play. And, you know, we changed it from Caitlin to Mitchell because Mitchell was getting a bit hot there for a while. So... Hey, why not? That's the luxury that we have. We got this, uh, you know. I keep saying she should be defensive player of the year. Just what she does for this team. Benajo, when you're having to guard someone like Clark, or you have a matchup so frequently, does that make it easier for you because it's just one right after another, or is it is it sort of like a chess match where you are sort of adjusting to her adjustments? And I guess how did that sort of play out tonight? Um, I think it's more of a, a chess match, you know. Um, each player that I defend is different. So, you know, preparing for them, learning tendencies, and then just no matter what, no matter who I'm guarding, just trying to be as aggressive and disruptive as, as possible. So I think it's it's more of a, ch a chess match, but it does, um, because I'm always having to do it, I'm kind of always ready and prepared for that moment. Awesome. Um, Benaja, uh, it's been great to see you become such a force on the offensive side of the floor, um, and I think that the team is going to continue to benefit from you guys, um, from you guys looking to Benaja as an option more. What do you? What is your mindset in terms of looking to be more consistent against other teams in that space as well? Um, just as I prepare, just you know, knowing um, where my spots are and getting there, um, just continuing to stay ready for the moment and making the most out of my opportunity. Um, B, you noted in your post-game chat with Tina that um, defending the Commissioner's Cup title means a lot because of the cause that the team is donating money to. Can you tell us what you know about the organization Women Creating Change, and, and why does that give you extra motivation you know, today to come out and play your best? Well, I know the, um, the primary point for the organization is to you know, give women a voice and a, a platform um, to make change, whether it's in front of legis legislators, whether it's, you know, giving women a voice. Um, and so the fact that we're partnered with them, like I said, that's the, the primary reason for that, regardless of, you know, we're, we're basketball players. It's part of the competition. We're going to go out and compete. And we want to win no matter what, but it just gives it that extra benefit. Uh, this question is for JJ. You are currently averaging the most assists since your 2021 MVP campaign. Uh, what do you think is just clicking on the floor that's allowing you to get your teammates just good looks? Um, I mean, just understanding the offense. Um, people are cutting hard and making themselves available. And when I have the ball, I pride myself on, you know, just making the right plays and, um, you know, doing whatever is best for the team. Coach, uh, tonight you guys have five players in double digits. You know, when you guys are playing this effective and this efficient, how dangerous do you guys believe you could really be? And, um, you know, what, what does it say about this offense? Yeah, look, I think we've got we've got attack from multiple spots here. And I think uh, when we're playing great defense and pushing in transition, that looks great for us. Um, just the versatility that we have of our players. And, you know, we've worked, continue to work on the spacing. And, you know, I know people's been, uh, some of you have asked about the offense. It's more like the offense is fine. We're just still trying to work out the little clinks and how do we get the best looks every single time. And when we're sharing it and playing selfless like that, that's, that's you know, beautiful basketball. It's fun to watch. It's fun to play. Um, but then just making sure we have good inside-outside attack. I think that's critical for us. We establish B. We establish JJ early in the game, and that kind of opens up for outside. And But, you know, we'll keep getting better. Every team's going to be different. New challenges, um, you know, f come every day. So, But that's exciting, and I hopefully we'll continue to grow. What was the messaging you gave the team during those, during those sort of time periods, and what do you think we started to get right, especially in the third 
Yeah, look, we have had, we haven't been, you know, the second quarter, we've had some pretty average second quarters, like starting off great in the first quarter. Um, so Sabrina, actually, before we went out, we're talking about we have to, you know, let's be consistent. That was the, the theme for the week. Uh, let's be consistent with effort and our processes and, and, and everything. But, you know, Sabrina made a point like, you know, we, we haven't been good, you know. So it's just a mindset thing. We... Um, we had some lapses there. We had to call some quick timeouts there, but it was good these players could, um, you know, just adjust and, and get back at playing how we need to. Sometimes when we get up, uh, you know, I think we get a little bit bored. So, um, so it's more like, no, let's continue to play for 40 minutes because that's what we're going to need and it's about us, um, you know, fulfilling our potential. My question is also for Sandy. Um, you played the three wings off the bench a lot together and slotted the starters around them. Is this the most you felt like you experienced that versatility and length off the bench that you know we've been talking about um, even in preseason? Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, I suppose when you Niara's out at, at Loud KB, we we have always thought she's a really good player. But you were trying to get you know what's the best rotations and making sure we got some starters on with our bench because um, you know they're new and how it all works. Works. Um, but we had great production from the bench. I mean, Kayla, I think we saw what she did last game. You see she's a, a confident player. Um, but, you know, Kennedy Burke, she's pretty special. And it was great for Leo. Um, you know, I don't want her to hesitate on any kind of threes, you know, and shoot them up and yeah, keep playing in the right way. But we had a – you know, we created for each other. I thought we, we, we played poised and we got two feet in the paint. We got some open looks near the end too. So it was fun to watch and play that. We, we're getting there. You know, we've got to keep building. Every game's a, a new challenge for us. And, um, but we've got to just stay with the process. Hey, Coach. Now you have, including tonight, you have five games in eight days. How important was it for you or valuable, especially just the last couple of minutes, just to get the starters off the court and you can get some more rest? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, obviously you want to win, win as much as you can and have good rhythm, but without overplaying it, we had a, obviously a great lead and it was good. And those players came in and they felt really comfortable. So, you know, I'm happy for them. I think the teammates are happy for our bench to come in because it's important. We talk about our bench depth and, you know, we haven't – we're still building to get that, but it shows what we're capable of. Um, and so, you know, happy, really happy for the win now. You know, off to Chicago and we haven't played very well and now it's another opportunity to go in there and, and, and play to our, play way better than what we have in our past two games. Hey, John Quell, Benajah, for either of you, the two of you combined to shoot 11 of 12 in the paint and especially in that first half, you guys had 30 points as a team in the paint. What were you seeing? The ball was moving really well, but that was allowing you to get so close to the rim and find that success. I mean, I think it was, <clears throat> I think it was just everybody's um, attention to get the ball inside. Um, whether it was me or B or anybody else, when we had the opportunity to get the ball in and and play inside out, we wanted to focus on that, and um, I think we were successful tonight. Coach, you talk about the offense. You guys third quarter pushed it, pushed the uh, pace a little bit. It seemed like once you guys start pushing the pace and getting out front, it kind of slowed. Indiana's down. Was that the key, pushing the paint? Yeah, they're in a back-to-back, -back, but we want to push the pace. We think if we can get stops, make some misses, running. Uh, it's one of our biggest strengths at the moment and something we want to continue to, to do. Hey, JJ, back here. A couple of possessions, Indiana tried to get uh, Benigio off of the ball handler, put Stewie to switch, but didn't garner much success. Just how much of a boost is it to know, like, it really isn't much of a mismatch. You know, the team's trying to get defenders off the ball. On the defense. Yeah, I think it's our job to to help be out. You know, she she has a tough um, responsibility every night to guard the the best perimeter players, and she does a great job of that. And so teams are definitely going to try to do what they can to get her away from those players to get to make the game um, a little bit easier for them. So when we're switching, we have to make sure we're in the right positions. Um, we have attention to detail, knowing the person, the player personnel, and you know what they prefer to do in those one on one situations because. Um, as much as she's doing a great job, we have to make sure that we're backing her up. John Quill, um, you dominated them in the paint, 44 to 32, and uh, you had a double-double, 18 and 13. Great game. Um, my question is, tonight you really um, – played well on defense. They they got nothing inside against you guys. How satisfied are you with your defensive effort today? Uh, extremely satisfied. Um, 
you know, anytime you're going um, against, you know, post players that, you know, try to get, you know, get to the to their positions and score, and especially physical bigs like like Aaliyah Boston, you kind of come in knowing that it's going to be a, a pretty physical game. Um, and I think we rose to the challenge. We we did our best out there, and and it was it was really good. Sandy, you you talked a minute ago about the confidence that you have in in players like Leone and, and Kennedy Burke. Uh, just wondering how, when their minutes aren't you know consistent, how you keep them ready and how you kind of instill that confidence in them um, so that they could go out there and perform. You know, just knowing that there are going to be games where you really do need to rely on them. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I think um, in between games we have. Um, you know, spending time, their individual coaches are spending time with them, but we're putting them on court and playing against our guys. Um, and that helps just like, you know, just to to feel for the game, not get many minutes, but how do you stay prepared? Because you never know when your number's going to be called. And they've been doing that. And it shows. I think, um, you know, the more and more time they can get on the court and, and play in the, in, with our system, it, it just makes them feel more, more comfortable when they do get out in the court in the game. Uh, but Nigel jean Quo, congratulations. Uh, your coach just mentioned that at times when you guys have a sizable lead that it's possible that boredom might set in. Uh, would you agree with uh, that assessment? And particularly in the third quarter, what allowed you to snap out of uh, uh, that whatever complacency that might have set in and you extended that lead? I mean, I, w I wouldn't necessarily say boredom, but I do think that we tend to like, okay, we have this lead, so we tend to get a little bit laxed. Um, and then, you know, we talk about it and then we have to snap out of it. So it's, um, I, think it's I think it's more of that than boredom, per se. Um, <laughs> I think we get a little bit, we get a little lax because we're like, okay, we got this lead. Like, let me just take a breath. And then, you know, also understanding this is the WNBA and anything can happen at any time. You know, we're, we're going against talented players every night. And so, um, you know, that's something that we have to that we have to clean up. We have to do it for 40 minutes. Um, so now that we we know that, or it's it's been bought, we we have a lot of attention to it. Um, I'm sure that's something that we'll focus on and we'll clean up. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.